iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max? Pro or Pro Max? So a few weeks ago, I made a review of this iPhone 14 Pro Max after six months, and this was my first max size iPhone ever. There was a bit of a transition going from the regular size Pro to the Pro Max as my main device, as I discussed in that video. But now, I feel like I can really tell you the difference between these two devices. So if you're still wondering if you should go with the iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, then this video is for you. So let me start with the things that are the same. If you remember back with the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus were released, all three of you who remember like I do, the 6 Plus actually had an advantage over the regular 6 with the camera. The 6 Plus was the first iPhone to get optical image stabilization, which meant that the iPhone camera could actually physically move the lens around to adjust for movement when taking a photo or video. And since the iPhone 11 Pro, both the regular and the Pro Max were the exact same except for screen size and battery, which is the case for the 14 Pro and Pro Max. On the outside of these two iPhones is the modern Apple design language that really started with the 2018 iPad Pro, or you could say even the iPhone 4 or 5. You get a stainless steel band all the way around, which I'll talk about later, and a glass front and back. These look and feel premium on the outside, and inside is the stupid fast A16 processor with six gigabytes of RAM. These phones just fly, benchmarks aside, no matter what you throw at it. When it comes to displays, both of these devices have a beautiful high-res retina display at 460 pixels per inch. Go ahead, try and see a pixel with your eyeballs. You can't. They get up to 2,000 nits of brightness for outdoor viewing, they have the option for an always-on display, and they get all of the usual Apple display stuff like True Tone, P3 color support, and on the Pros, you get 120 hertz Pro motion. Up top, you get the new dynamic island on both of these phones, which is the exact same size on both, which makes it look a lot smaller on the Pro Max than it does on the Pro. And I know you've seen all the features of the Dynamic Island, but it's a cool little novelty that takes the downside of a screen cutout and adds a lively little interactive space. On the backside, these iPhones have the same comically large camera arrays with a main ultra wide and zoom lens. These cameras perform extremely well and remain at the top of the pack or near the top of the pack compared to other flagship phones. The shots are almost always crisp and bright and are good enough to hold on to. With video, there is this new action mode, which just does incredible video stabilization as you're moving or running around, as you can see in this video of me running like an idiot. They also have that weird cinematic mode that was introduced with the iPhone 13 Pro, which now does more formats. Add in the SOS features and the crash detection on the new iPhones, and that pretty much rounds out the features of the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. So as you can see, these devices are nearly identical with all of the same features and performance, and they're priced at $999 for the Pro and $1099 for the Pro Max. And of course, you can increase storage on both of these and of course the cost. Now, the two big differences between these two devices are the screen size and the battery size. But before I get to that, and if you're wondering how these iPhones look so new after all of this time, well, that's because of this Magic Stand case from CaseQ, and CaseQ is sponsoring this video. The Magic Stand case has everything you want in a case and more. It has a beautiful, clean design with protection for the front glass and cameras, and they come in multiple colors. The magic of this case is the built-in stand that simply folds out so you can place your phone on any surface for watching movies, taking FaceTime calls with your kids, or just to be hands-free. The Magic Stand is also fully MagSafe compatible with 48 powerful magnets in the ring to work with all of your MagSafe charging accessories. Check out the link in the description code below to save 10% on your Magic Stand case, and my thanks to CaseQ for sponsoring this video. Now, the size and weight differences between these two devices is instantly noticeable. And for me, coming from the regular Pro size, it was an adjustment to move to the 14 Pro Max. It took me a few days before it felt like a normal size device but with anything, you do get used to it over time. The Pro Max in my hand just feels right at the edge of being uncomfortable to use. I don't have large hands, so your mileage may vary, but the wider and taller device makes it more difficult to use one-handed. I can't reach across the device with my thumb or get to the top of the screen. I have to do a lot of hand gymnastics to be able to hit keys on the other side when typing or hitting a back button at the top of the display. That's not to say that I can't reach anything one-handed on the Pro, but I definitely need to work at it harder with the Max than I do the regular Pro. And when it comes to pocketability, I haven't really had an issue with either of these devices with the pants that I wear. 
My pockets are generally deep enough that the Pro and Pro Max do not stick out of the top pocket or dig into my hip when sitting down. On rare occasions, I might be wearing something with smaller pockets or a different fit, and I will see some of that, but generally, I don't have any issue. The bigger issue to me is the weight. If there was one thing I could change about the iPhone 14 Pro and especially the Pro Max, it's the weight. The Pro Max weighs 240 grams compared to the 206 grams for the iPhone Pro. Again, this is something that you feel instantly when picking up or switching between the two devices. I frequently find myself being aware of the weight when I use the Max, whether it's holding up to surf the web or type out emails or laying in bed and watching a video or holding the phone one-handed with my pinky supporting it. I feel the weight and often I want to go back to the Pro. The regular Pro is nicer to hold for longer periods of time in my opinion. However, I do feel that both of these devices are heavier than they probably should be and that's probably in large part due to the stainless steel band on these devices. It looks nice but it definitely adds a lot of weight and you can see this weight difference where the regular 14 Pro is actually heavier than the plus sized iPhone 14. As different as it is going from the Pro to the Pro Max going bigger, going from the Max to the Pro almost feels like a novelty. Going down in size almost feels like it's a toy. It's hard to explain, but like I said before, with time it starts to feel normal. But if you're going from the Max to the Pro or even the Pro to the iPhone 13 mini, the smaller device just feels more fun, more agile, and then eventually you just get used to the size. Now, because the Max is a larger iPhone, you get the added benefit of a larger display. This lets you see more content on the display at one time, or get more screen space for games, or have a better video watching experience. And if you're someone who needs to have larger text on the display because your eyes suck or you're getting older or whatever, you can do that on the Pro Max without losing that much content with the size difference. My eyes are not getting any better, so that may be more of a necessity in a few years for me. And a bonus for the larger iPhone is the better typing experience. I'm a two thumb typer and the larger device is just about perfect for me. I am quicker and more accurate with the Pro Max than I am with the Pro. Well, as accurate as iOS keyboard lets you be these days, I mean, let's be honest, but that's a different story. I switched back to the Pro a couple of weeks ago and I still cannot get used to the smaller keyboard that I was using for years before going to the Pro Max. That was almost the hardest thing about switching back to the Pro. The hardest thing is losing the extra battery life. Yes, the battery life on this iPhone 14 Pro Max is so darn good that it basically outweighs the size concerns for me. I mean, this thing is just an absolute beast. I have no battery anxiety when using this device and I go to bed with a comfortable amount of buffer. Apple says you can get up to 23 hours of video playback on the Pro and up to 29 hours of video playback on the Pro Max. Now, that doesn't really translate to anything, so here's my battery usage. On the 14 Pro, over the last 10 days, I was getting over five hours of active screen on time. My usage consisted of regular Safari stuff, work apps, email, video, music, podcasts, regular stuff, just, too much of it probably. And with the Pro, I'm going to bed with somewhere between five and 30% battery left over. And that's mostly without any charging during the day. I just charge at night, pick it up and go. With the Pro Max, before I switched back to the Pro, I was using it an even more unhealthy amount of more than six hours of screen on time with basically the same app types. I'm pretty consistent. With the Pro Max, I usually go to bed with between 20 and 40% battery left on the Pro Max. So I spend more time on the Pro Max and have more battery left over at the end of the day compared to the Pro. That's insane and I love it. I think part of my lower usage on the Pro was battery anxiety. Even though I could charge the iPhone anytime during the day since I work at home, I usually don't. And just knowing I have a smaller battery, I think I'm subconsciously using it less. I don't know, I'm no psychiatrist, but the biggest advantage of the Pro Max undeniably is the battery life and the biggest reason I will probably go back. So that about covers this video, and I hope that it was somewhat helpful. But what do you guys think? Do you prefer the more pocketable, easier to hold pro, or are you looking for a battery monster? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're still rocking an older iPhone and wondering if you should even upgrade at all, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.